chaplains in the military have begun once again. Uh, during the Obama administration, it was almost a uh, daily occurrence. Uh, they subsided for the most part during the Trump years, although there were still some things in the pipeline there. But last month, the U.S. Army reprimanded chaplain Major Andrew Calvert for using his personal Facebook page earlier this year to question President Biden's anticipated repeal of the previous administration's military transgender ban, which we were a part of. The investigation that was launched in response to the chaplain's post concluded that he violated regulations and a reprimand was recommended. Well, Chaplain Calvert is rejecting the investigation's conclusions and he's appealing as the reprimand would effectively end his career. Joining me now to talk about the chaplain's case is Mike Berry, Deputy General Counsel and Director of Military Affairs for First Liberty Institute, which is representing Chaplain Calvert free of charge. Uh, Mike, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. It's great to be with you again. And uh, Semper Fi. Semper Fi. All right. Tell us about this case, what's happening and what the chaplain is doing and how our viewers and listeners can help. Well, pure and simple, this case is about the, the United States Army punishing a chaplain, a decorated chaplain at that, uh, for simply expressing his sincerely held religious beliefs, consistent with the teachings of his denomination, and might I add, consistent with Department of Defense policy at that time. On January 25th, when Chaplain Calvert made a, uh, a, a comment on an Army Times Facebook post, so the Army Times posted an article on Facebook and left the comments open uh, for the public, and Chaplain Calvert using his personal Facebook page, commented on the article saying that essentially he supported the Department of Defense policy at that time, which was that people with a history of gender dysphoria were medically disqualified from serving in the military. And he said that he supported that policy. And the Army decided that that viewpoint, uh, even expressed by a chaplain in accordance with his sincerely held religious beliefs, was impermissible, and they punished him for it. And now he faces the end of his career as a result. Now, Mike, isn't this reminiscent of what we saw during the uh, Barack Obama years? Yes, the, the, the hits keep on coming. You know, his, history is now repeating itself. Uh, many of us predicted that incidents like this would probably occur under a Biden administration. We hoped that they would not. We hoped that religious freedom would still be, remain strong uh, in, in our military. And, you know, despite a lot of the rhetoric and platitudes that we heard, here we are. Chaplains, are, I mean, what's next? Are they going to go after chaplains for what they say from the pulpit during, during chapel services? Yeah, when you, what they found in the, this investigation that he violated AR 600-20, that doesn't mean anything to most people, uh, but he engaged in discrimination. Um, and then also he engaged in online misconduct by simply stating that he supported the current policy and was opposed to what might be the policy under the Biden administration? Yeah, that's right. And I, I think what's even more important to point out, Tony, is that uh, you know during the Trump administration, we had uniformed members of our military marching in political rallies and political parades in uniform expressing openly their opposition to their commander in chief's policies. And that was all considered to be perfectly acceptable. And in fact, something that should be celebrated and applauded by, by many in the military and, and in the media. And now you have a chaplain who expresses his support for who at that time, uh, or at, uh, at that time was the existing policy of the Department of Defense. And now he's being punished. This just goes to show you're only really allowed to have one point of view and one perspective. And it doesn't matter, e even if you have a religious objection right, to where the policy might be heading somewhere in the future, if you express your religious views openly and you happen to be a member of the military, they will come after you. Even if you use your personal Facebook page, Chaplain Calvert's pa Facebook page disclaims any endorsement by the Army. It says, this is my personal Facebook page. I'm only speaking as Andrew Calvert not as a member of the armed forces, et cetera, et cetera. And they said, it doesn't matter. We think you violated the law. 
It doesn't matter that, it, that, that you're a chaplain and that you're required by your denomination to hold to these views. The fact that you put it on Facebook, your career is over. That's unacceptable in this country. You know, Mike, I think it's an extremely important point in contrasting what took place during the Trump years. And and I was critical of the Trump administration and being slow to clean up the uh, Department of Defense. They never did get it done. Uh, and it's pr quite frankly, it's because what was in the pipeline after eight years of Barack Obama, where they purged conservative officers and you had all those politically correct officers in the pipeline, it would have taken another four years uh, to really clean it up. But I want to go back to something you talked about uh, with in terms of a chaplain and his messages, his preaching. Is this what we see here, the canary in the coal mine when it comes to the free speech of chaplains? Well, I, I mean, I certainly hope not, but I don't see how it can be viewed any other way. I think the purge was, is only going to continue. And uh, I certainly wouldn't put it past uh, those in, in leadership right now, in the executive branch and in, in the Pentagon, to start going after chaplains for what they preach from the pulpit, to go, start going after chaplains for what they put, again, in their personal Facebook page. Or are they gonna start looking in chaplains' diaries to see, hey, what, you know, what are you writing in your diary? This is the equivalent of the thought police coming after a chaplain for what they say in their personal capacity. And we know that that's exactly what the far left wants to happen. They want to root out and purge, just as you said, all right, anybody who holds a view contrary to what they believe is the only acceptable view for people to be in public service, including our military. And the bottom line is that is going to hurt our military. That is going to cause people to turn away from military service. We're already seeing problems with recruiting and retention. And, and if that yeah. continues, that's a national security concern. We need to be Absolutely. very, very attentive to it. That's absolutely right. Mike Berry, thanks so much for joining us. Great work, First Liberty. Appreciate you representing this chaplain. We want to encourage people to stand with you as you do that. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.